Okay. Okay. Okay, council's all ready, good, okay. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the mayor and council special meeting of the borough of Englewood Cliffs. Today is March 31st, 2021. Uh, it's approximately 6.36 p.m. I call the meeting to order. Um, Madam Clerk, were you saying something? Uh, I was trying to unmute Carol. Uh, okay, Carol. She had called, it's okay. Oh. I know she's good. Okay, so, um, so I just called the meeting to order. Um, and I think before we uh, even do the roll call, I'd like to have Councilman Wu uh, make a statement uh, regarding um, some recent um, hatred uh, that's been running around the country and really unacceptable and um, despicable. So uh, Councilman Wu, I know you wanted the floor. Yeah. And I think this is a very important topic. So I wanna to put it at the very beginning. Thank you, uh, Mayor, for um, putting this at the top of the agenda. Thank you, Mayor and Council, uh, residents of Englewood Cliffs, uh, our teachers and the Board of Education, uh, our dedicated Borough Hall team, our uh, courageous police and Department of uh, Public Works, our fire department. Um, we are one community. Um, I want to make, I want to hereby make a statement on the recent hate crimes against Asian Americans committed throughout the country, including right here in our backyard in New York City and the bloody fatal massacre in the large metropolis of Atlanta. Hate crimes against any group of people should never be tolerated, period. I think we can all agree on that. We as American citizens need to support each other. We as Americans need to support each other, uh, be vigilant and protect each other against these malicious characters who try to take down our country. My heart's been very heavy recently with this surge in violence against the Asian American community. I wake up and ask, why is this happening and what can I do? One place is to, one place is to make this statement tonight for our community. I'm sure many of our, many in our English community, community walk outside now and need to think if someone is gonna come from behind and be unprovokingly attacked because of the color of their skin or the shape of their eyes. Seniors who in all cultures should especially be respected are no less safe and have seemingly been targeted these cowardly attacks. In the past week, I had to explain to my kids again that they are every bit American as those who are of other races. Racism in the Asian community has been nothing new. This history includes the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, the only act of its kind passed by Congress to prohibit a specific nationality from immigrating into the United States. After 15 to 20,000 Asian Chinese railroad workers helped finish the Transcontinental Railroad, a dangerous job no one wanted to take. The internment of Japanese Americans, Americans in caps during World War II, and something little known to Americans because it isn't taught in our schools, the Chinese massacre of 1871, which was one of the largest mass lynchings, 19 immigrants with 15 hung in our country's history. As with most issues, a resolution starts with education. I will pass my statement to the Board of Education as well and hope that we can have open discussions with our school children on these matters. Even on our council, Mark Park and myself have been included in statements that would make anyone cringe. These are the seeds of racism that eventually spawn out of control resulting in the recent events. The killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery and countless other racially motivated acts should not be forgotten either. We should all have the right to live in this country without having to fear that our time may be cut short. As people start going back to the office and back to their morning commutes, the Asian American Pacific Island AAPI community's biggest fear about going back to the office is not just catching COVID-19, but the fear of encountering anti-Asian hate and violence as we leave our homes. To conclude, I just wanna emphasize, re-emphasize education and awareness. In terms of nonprofit organizations who are focusing on these two points, there is the Stop AAPI Hate organization with the website stopaapihate.org, which is taking the reporting of incidents in real time. Any situation is helpful for these nonprofits. Any situation report, any donation is helpful for these nonprofits to aggregate awareness 
and advocate for local, state, and national policies to address these issues. I thank the mayor and council for allowing me to talk on this topic, which is near and dear to our community. Yours truly. Thank you very much, uh, Borough Council President Wu. Uh, those were very profound words of moving. Uh, please uh, be sure to say that I concur with everything you just said when you passed that along. Uh, thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, have a roll call, please. Mayor Cranjack? Here. Councilperson Sparrow? Wu? Here. Here. Park? Is muted. I'm unmuting him. Councilman Park? No, okay, yes. De Gregorio? Team Here. was you know, unmuted. Team needed. Zabari? Yes. Katrubis? Here. The borough attorney is not here yet. Uh, acting borough administrator? Here. And municipal clerk. Mayor, everyone's present except Councilman Farrell, where you stated he's running late. Yes, he'll be joining us shortly. Um, okay, so at this point, I'd like to uh, have everyone rise and salute the, the flag of our great country. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America, in a republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Uh, I would also like at this point to give the community an update on the COVID-19 pandemic in town uh, as it relates to our town. Um, we um, have two, two active cases, the last uh, coming uh, today, actually. Um, and uh, we've had a total uh, historically of 332 cases. Uh, it put things in perspective, we're a town of about 5,300 people. And um, sadly, we've had eight deaths of residents. And um, our condolences go out to those families. Madam Clerk, would you please read into the record the Open Public Meetings Act statement? This meeting has been duly advertised in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 31 of the Public Laws of 1975, also known as Open Public Meetings Act or the Sunshine Law. Notice of the 2021 Annual Mayor and Council Meeting Schedule has been provided to the officially designated newspapers, posted on the borough's website, posted on the outside doors of the municipal building, since public access to such building is not allowed because of COVID-19, other borough facilities were applicable and provided to all parties who have requested a copy of such notice. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this be Sorry, this meeting is being conducted electronically via Zoom pursuant to various executive orders promulgated by Governor Philip Murphy pursuant to the provisions of Public Law 2020 Chapter 11, which allows for meetings to be conducted electronically and pursuant to various finance local notices promulgated by the State of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Local Finance Board. Notice that to Zoom access has been provided according to law. Okay, thank you. Uh, in, in connection with the virtual setting that we find ourselves in again, um, I know some towns have um, started uh, in-person meetings. Uh, I don't think we are ready for that because our, our council chambers is uh, so small to begin with. Uh, and if you're gonna socially distance yourselves in there, uh, it, it's pretty much gonna become virtual anyway. Um, but what I am thinking of is by locating the meeting um, as we've done in the past, uh, when the weather warms up, we'll, we'll maybe meet outdoors uh, live and, um, and Zoom. So we'll have live and Zoom uh, and kind of keeping an eye on the weather in terms of when, when we can do that. Uh, at this point uh, on our agenda, I'd like to go into closed session uh, to discuss those uh, closed session items that are listed on tonight's agenda. Uh, and to do that, I'll need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? 
Okay, thank you. So, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read into the record the appropriate language that we need to go into closed session? Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Inglewood Cliffs has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain confidential matters. And whereas the minutes of the closed session will remain confidential as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act or shall be released when there is no further need for confidentiality as authorized by the borough attorney. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Inglewood Cliffs will go into closed session for the following matters as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act and JSA 10 colon 4 12. Pending litigation, co-affordable housing and 800 Sylvan versus the Borough of Inglewood Cliffs and personnel, finance office, vacancy and interview. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for the public uh, and your planning purposes, what we're going to do now is go into closed session. Uh, you'll be placed in a waiting room while the governing body and, and others, um, other professionals are, are in a closed session uh, discussing these items that were just read. I, I estimate it'll take about an hour. So we'll probably rejoin you uh, at about 7.45 uh, um, latest 8 p.m. Uh, at which time you'll have an opportunity to make comment uh, publicly. Uh, we'll have the budget workshop and we'll have a resolution um, that, that may be voted on. Okay, so thank you, we'll see you later. Okay. All right. Um, I have a motion to come out of closed session, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? No. Okay. Uh, so thank you to the public uh, for waiting for us. Um, it's 8.10. Uh, we had several um, closed session items to review and discuss. Mayor, for the record, I would like to state that Councilman Farrow joined closed session at 6.50 p.m. Okay. Thank you. And uh, as usual, it was a spirited discussion uh, at times. Um, and we're here now. Uh, so next on our agenda is the public portion of this meeting. So I would like to have uh, a motion to open to the public for discussion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Uh, so for the members of the public, uh, if you wish to be heard at this meeting, just virtually raise your hand or wave at me uh, and we'll call on you. And uh, you could just uh, make your comments at that time. If you're on a phone call, uh, if you're calling in rather, uh, we can't obviously see you, but you could just unmute yourself if no one else is speaking uh, before we close the public portion and, and we'll recognize you. Me Mayor, what if I, there's not a lot of people here? What if I unmute everyone and they could wave? <clears throat> I think that might be easier because okay. there's there's phones and I can't see them. Okay, well that's fine. Uh, same rule, right? right? If, if somebody wants to speak, I saw um, Mrs. O'Shea raised her hand just All now. Right, so let me. I'm going to unmute everyone. As far as the telephones, if they could hear me, they've been unmuted. And Mrs. O'Shea is unmuted. All right, so council, you're all muted apparently. Um, and we need you to unmute yourselves. So Ms. Mrs. O'Shea, please go ahead. So muted. She has to unmute herself. I had unmuted myself, I'm sorry. Um, I'm very glad I didn't miss this meeting. And when I looked at the agenda uh, while I was waiting, I saw there was going to be uh, some type of a proclamation or something about Asian uh, uh, hate that's going on or something. Um, I don't know if you can tell me what I don't I don't have, I can't open that other screen. What is that item? So Borough Council President will open the meeting uh, with, with a very um, well-delivered and profound statement regarding um, anti-Asian hate and, and all hate in, in general and how it has no, uh, no place here or in America. Um, and I think, um, Councilman, well, why don't we take your um, statement and put it up on the website tomorrow and uh, speaking for myself, I completely concur with everything uh, he said. I can't speak for anyone else on this council, but I assume that uh, everyone is in full agreement with 
uh, th those words that were delivered by Councilman Wu. Okay, so uh, I, I will be able to see it then, because I, I, I came into the meeting uh, after, after that, I imagine. You were already in closed session. We did but, it right at the call, right after I called the meeting to order. I wanted it up front as it's important. Okay, well, I'm very glad to see that because, um, as I recall, in um, 2019, no, 2020, 2020, when all the uh, issues with the Chiaffi tapes was ongoing and you had the um, stereotyping and ridiculing of uh, Councilman Park and Councilman Wu at that time by uh, members of the uh, employees, let's just say employees and police officers, high ranking police officers, um, including Chiaffi. Um, the Democrat council people couldn't bring themselves to uh, chastise or um, investigate or reprimand those actions. So I, I'm very happy to see this. And I, I hope that um, whatever transpires, I hope it uh, becomes unanimous by all the council, even though uh, Councilman, Councilwoman Sabari couldn't bring herself to do it in the past. Maybe now she's ready. I don't know, yeah. but I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. That's a good point, actually, because I think there were probably like three or four meetings where I asked the council to join me in condemning those statements and those actions uh, that were, were racist. They were anti-Asian. They were anti-African American. They were homophobic. They were misogynist. And I could, I could never get, it's really amazing. I could never get Ellen Park, Debbie Sabari, Etta Versa, or Gloria O to join me in something so base as, as condemning that all. And, and to I condemn your muting. I, I, well, I condemn you actually interrupting. You shouldn't me. interrupt, David. So, uh, you know, I, to this day, I, I just find it amazing that these are the people that this town elected and they were willing to mm -hmm. trade in their values for their politics. Yes. We're right? being so, political again. This is not the podium for that. Well, it's regarding my comment, Debbie. You know, no, so you're, you're I, I think it is appropriate right and you shouldn't it's interrupt. Political. You shouldn't well, interrupt. Fa facts have no feelings, right? Those were the facts. Those are but not I'm very, Debbie, you're interrupting again. I guess I am. Yes, you are. That's rude. I guess okay? I am. Yes, you are. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, anything um, else, Mrs. O'Shea? Among other things, right? Okay, but I just wanted to say how pleased I am to uh, see that on the agenda and I will be looking at it tomorrow in, in total. Thank you very much, uh, Council President Wu. And thank you very much, Mayor Kranjak. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. On the public wishing to be heard. You're not muted, David. You're just trying to <laughs> draw attention. Um, anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? Uh, we have a very small crowd tonight. Um, some people would say- Hello. Yes, hello, uh, caller, caller yeah. number one. Could you say your name or your address, please? Definitely, definitely. Hello, everyone, Mayor and Councilman, Councilwoman. This is Brian Sank. Hi, Brian. 173. Hi, Brian. Are you hearing me? Uh, I hear you. Yes, hi. Uh, sorry, uh, Councilman DiGregorio interrupted you. Can you just state your name again, please, and your address? No problem. It's, it's not an interruption. He wants more clarification. I'm Brian Sank, Fershine, 173 Charlotte Place, Engle Cliffs, of course. And I'm pausing for permission to go on or whenever you're ready. Uh, please continue, go ahead. Okay, I'm just making sure the uh, everyone can hear me. There's no, uh, there's nobody saying they can't. Okay, because it's on a phone. Time. Sorry about that. Thank you. I listened to, uh, it's been a long time, but I've listened to the last budget meeting two weeks ago. And you mentioned about a recycling problem. It was brought up by Councilman De Gregorio and, and discussed by others. And if possible, I just like to make a statement or two before and make a small, small suggestion. You can either take it or not. I just want to throw it out there. So first I'd like to examine the root cause of the problem. In 
my humble opinion, this is a short-term problem due to COVID and more people. Did someone want to say something? I heard you, you something. I'll, the, I'll stop. I'm sorry. Um, you referenced the problem. Uh, can you just, we didn't hear what the problem was. Can you just repeat that, please? Oh, I said the word. It's the re about the recycling problem. And I mentioned it was brought up by Councilman De Gregorio and discussed by the others near the end of the meeting, uh, the budget meeting, uh, two weeks ago. Is there a specific I think it was. problem? And I'm sorry. There, there was a suggestion. Yeah. I'll go into it. Let me just make my statement and you can ask questions along the way or at the end. No problem, Mayor. Thank you very much. I just like to examine why I think is the root cause of the problem. In my humble opinion, this is a short term problem. It's due to COVID, more people staying at home, working from home, eating lunches, meals at home that normally would be outside at their work locations or dinners even eaten at home without going to restaurants. And guess what? The recyclables from all these end up at home and not at these other locations. So we have a overflux, I see it in the neighbor's homes. So a second factor is also don't forget that those high school students and other taking college courses or wherever who are in private schools who are at home doing it remotely, of course, they're eating lunch at home and not discarding the recyclables in the recycling containers. I'm getting to my point, so don't worry. And thus we end up with an increased need for recycling and angle clips. It's a short term. It's not a long term problem. So maybe we should not, just maybe, we should not solve it with a huge monetary outlay for extra days of recycling. Whole days, maybe overtime. Of course you could say no overtime, but how do you do the whole town in one Wednesday? I just heard the uh, suggestion, maybe we buy trucks. I'm familiar with this, uh, uh, David, uh, buying trucks like Englewood has, which you need to buy. You need to supply the residents of the town with the new blue separate large barrels. They do hold more, but guess what? They take up more space in the garage too. And those are the barrels with the grab bar, the, blue, the metal grab bar for the trucks to empty and grab and self-empty so all you need is a driver. These solutions require time to decide what to do. Time to set up the bids for new recycling truck or two even. One does each half of the town. Time to buy and distribute barrels to every household. Guess what? You also need an education program to instruct the people how to place the barrels. I place mine inside the driveway. You can't do that now. It has to be placed at the edge, the edge of the street. Some people have, I know in the first district, they have very small driveways. This is gonna get very crowded. I see it in Fort Lee, I see it in, uh, in uh, Englewood. So th there are people, they solve the problems, but I'm just bringing it up now before we head off in that direction. One other piece of information I know from Englewood, and you know how I know, it took a year or more to get everyone on board with it. This is without COVID problems. And they're still having problems with it, as I know, when you have new residents come in who don't know how to do this. They've never had their old location. These are all details. We can work it out. I'm confident the council and I'm confident whichever way you'll go. I just want to point out it's expensive right now and time consuming given the COVID and everything. I have a humble suggestion, just a small one. Feel free to, you know, expand it, do less, do more, whatever you want. It's, it's uh, the council's decision. I'm just suggesting. We can start today. No, without bids, without a truck, without what? We can start today to accommodate the extra recycling load that I'm sure are piling up because of the three things I mentioned at the beginning of my talk. And very simple. It's four times a year in 2021. What am I talking about? Well, 
Look at the recycling calendar. I'm sure you'll look at it when you get home. There are purple boxes that say no recycling days. They're the fifth week in four months a year. Just write on the back of some recreation or some other notice, just to save the cost, that four days a year, those four days, and in the new calendar, you could print it better, four days a year are available for the entire townwide recycling. That means north and south, no difference. Just those four days, okay? Just put a note, as I know they did this years ago in the mailing. I know about this. You know, I know. It takes a long time. So explain to the residents that they put it out on Wednesday, like just normal, but both sides of the town do it. And just say there may take into Thursday. It may they get stock in the winter too. It may take two days, you know, until the morning of Thursday to pick up all the recycling. Just those four days. I'm sure it won't upset everybody. And the best thing I want to say this, well, I want to first remind you, you do it already. You have two Saturdays of those excellent shredding and other recycling event. So you do have other things going on on the calendar. It's very easy to add in for future calendars. And easily added to schedule the DPW. I'm sure we're not asking them to do the whole town like it was suggested every single week not alternating, do the whole town was the suggestion. That's what I'm just responding to. And we can do it today, even with the um, COVID emergency. Look, anyway, just go ahead and research how much the extra truck is. Go ahead, see if it's worthwhile, see if it's really necessary. But I think right now we can start this simple program, you know, just see how it works on four ones. Did someone want to talk? I think the deep, I'm almost done. The DPW spends half a day doing it. I know they spend the other half a day doing other necessary things. So they really giving a whole day to cycling each week is a, is a uh, task, is a uh, ask. I'm sorry is the word. I wrote, I wrote the wrong word. It's an ask of the DPW to do that because then something else doesn't get done. So I know it won't solve 100% of the problems. But you know what it does? There are times in those five, fifth weeks that you have either the first or the second district, I forget which one, gets three weeks of recycling powering up because they don't get the, that week. They don't get the next week. It's the first week. That's the second district. We get it. And the second half of the town, southern half. And then that third week, three weeks, we get to put out the recycling. Look, this will just solve it for the moment. It's a short-term problem. I hope COVID goes away and the shots are coming. And I thank you very much for listening to me. And if anyone has any questions, I'm open and suggestions to themselves. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, may I call you Brian? Thank, uh, for the last name. President Wu for his uh, talk on the uh, Asian hate crimes. That was very, very important to so, say and uh, very timely. So thank you, Brian, thank you. And, and thank you for those comments uh, directed at Councilman Wu. Uh, just so you know, um, we alleviated mm -hmm. some of the distress uh, on the recycling program thanks to Councilman Farrow, who uh, made a Saturday morning option for people to go and drop off um, cardboard um, and, and other recyclables uh, at the DPW yard. Uh, from 9 a.m. to about 11.45 a.m., 12 noon. Um, but uh, So that's been working pretty well, and, and that's, that, that's reduced right. um, some of the pressure. Sorry, Councilman Farrow, I see you're muted. Just unmute yourself, Councilman Farrow. Excellent, Ramon. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it's on Saturday and Sunday. Both. Oh, Sunday also? Okay. Yes, I was Sunday also, yes. All right, so thank you for that. Okay, Brian, thank you very much. And again, I'm sorry, I don't recall your last name. So I just called you Brian. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Okay. Thank Have a good you, night. Mayor. Take care, be well. You uh, too. Any, anybody else wishing to be heard? Okay, um, if you're on the phone and you wanna be heard, just un unmute yourself. Um, 
and, and you could be heard as well. Um, I'm just making sure everybody could do that if they wanted to. Okay. Um, everyone, ha everyone has that ability, Mayor. That's how Mr. Sank got through. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, good. Um, so I don't see anyone else wishing to be heard. Can we have a motion to close the public portion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, uh, so that ends the, the public portion of the meeting. Uh, Mayor, may I, mute, may I mute everyone so nobody jumps in and then the governing body can unmute themselves? All right, go ahead, thanks. All right. One second. Okay, uh, next on our agenda is resolution 2021-92. Uh, this is authorized the hiring of full-time accounts payable and accounts receivable processing and human resources clerk. Um, when, when this resolution is made, I, I believe we have to mention the name, is that correct? Yes. Um, so um, in the absence of our attorneys, I'm not sure who would do that. Is it the clerk or the ad, uh, administrator? Mention the name? Yes. Uh, uh, let Carol, because I, I don't know her name, to be honest. Okay, so, or one of the or councilmen, uh, Will, as borough council president, would you like to make that motion? And then, um, yeah, he, he, Carol. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so moved. Well, you, uh, have to, you have to read the resolution. Oh, okay. Yep. No, no, by title, read it by, by title and the person's appointment. Right, okay. with, her name, with her name filled in. I got it. Sorry, guys. I simplified it a bit. Um, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the hiring of a full-time accounts payable and accounts receivable processing and human resources clerk. Um, I am pulling up her resume as we speak. Um, bear with me one second here. Um, Her name is Elizabeth Texa Kazika. Texa Kazika, last name. So the motion was made. Um, do I have a second? Second. Do we uh, go into details about salary or when do we do that? In the resolution. It's in the resolution. We have a second. Could I have a roll call, please? Council Persons Wu. Um, we have an immediate need, and um, there's a probation period for this hire, so I support it. Is that yes or no, please? Yes. Farrow? Uh, I think he dropped like, off. It looks like he dropped off. Okay, he'll call in. I don't see him yet. Um, Come Councilman, back. Councilman Park? Yes. Gregorio? Yes. Sabari? Yes. And Katrubis? Yes. Okay, um, circle back, please. Uh, count Hello. Councilman Farrow, can you hear me? Councilman Farrow, we just took a vote on Resolution 92, authorize the hiring of a full-time accounts payable and accounts receivable processing and human resources clerk. It's the person we interviewed. Um, we just took a vote and your vote, I can't hear you. You're muted. No, he's unmuted. Uh, if, if, you're if, voting, if you could just, Okay, the councilman gave me a fingers up, so. Thumbs uh, up and just shake your head. That means yes, councilman? Yes, yes okay. Yes, Mayor. Okay. thank you. Mayor? Yes. I just wanna make clear, I don't know what the resolution says, but the, her start date was gonna be April 12th, just so everyone knows. Thank you very much. And um, congratulations to the new hire and to the council for doing that um, expeditiously. Appreciate everybody's cooperation on that. Uh, so uh, next on the agenda is the budget workshop. And um, I see uh, Chris Battaglia, our CFO is on the call or I don't see him. I'm gonna ask him to unmute himself. And uh, perhaps you and- um, I asked him to unmute and I don't know if Mr. Garbarini is on here. Carol, do you see his number? 
uh, he does, I don't see his number. I actually sent him an email and I, I tried to call him again, but he was aware. We, we, we set the date for him. Okay. Is Mr. Gar uh, is Mr. Garbarini Mr. Battaglia is unmuted. I'm sorry, is, is Mr. Garbarini on? I see some phones that I don't yeah, recognize. I, maybe on, on, the, on some of the other numbers, if we could ask. I'm asking right now, if there's anyone, um, uh, is Mr. Garbarini on a phone? Mr. Garbarini, okay. Uh, so it doesn't seem that he's with us at the moment, but perhaps um, Mr. Battaglia and Ms. McMorrow could walk us through uh, the budget. There is a Zoom user, Mayor. I don't know who that is. Uh, Zoom. Okay, they're 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 muted. They muted themselves. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. Carol and Chris. Mayor, I don't know who that is that keeps unmuting. I'm not sure. Um, um, do you want me to mute everyone and then I'll unmute the governing body? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, Chris um, and Mr. Kamara, go ahead. Chris, is it okay? I'm gonna uh, give the floor to you first, and then I'll I'll jump in after. Is that are you okay with that? Sure. There's really not too much to go over as far as the, the budget's concerned. Uh, since our, our last meeting, there's only been about uh, there's been four changes to the operating budget, um, I, and those four were in IT, uh, in finance. Uh, in the borough of Tanafly Sewer Bill and the municipal court, the total was about $16,000. And that's the only change to the operating budget. Um, yes, thank you. Correct. Um, do you want to, uh, Chris, would you like to go over the capital? Do you want me to go over the? the capital, how we work through the ordinances, whatever you prefer. Uh, I want to thank Chris Mayer for all his help. Um, it, it, you know, going through the capital ordinances that are already in place to, to most efficiently use the monies that already have been um, designated for certain uh, expenditures sometimes can be a little uh, tedious going through or reading the old ordinances, but Chris and I got through it with the help of um, Steve Rogue at the Bond Council was great, and uh, Andy Hippolyte helped as well. So Chris, however you want to handle that, if you want to um, explain how we went through those, or yes. Can please. I just say one thing before you do that? Um, as I'm looking at it right now, there's a, a decrease for the average resident uh, of about $96. For the 2021 budget. Is that correct, Chris? It's a 1.53% decrease. That's correct. Okay. Um, I, I just thought that was, uh, if we're going to highlight anything right now, that'd be a good one. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and, um, uh, as Ms. McMorrow asked you to, go ahead. Um, can I just ask a question? Is it possible, uh, if we're going over documents, to share the screen so the public can see the documents and what we're going over? It would make it easier and everyone would see it on the screen. Just have to hit the, the green right. button on the bottom. Uh, I'm on a tablet. Uh, this is a document that was emailed out earlier today. I wouldn't be able to share my screen, but um, I, I think any anybody would be able to share that the document that was circulated today. Uh, I would be glad to do that, um, or um, maybe uh, Carol McMurrow, would you like to do that? 
Uh, Maybe uh, better. I don't have the, I don't have the ability from my home computer to be able to. Um, I think every everyone has the ability. Uh, it says share screen on the bottom. The green little, the green thing. Councilman, if you would you share the document if you're saying that you have the ability to. I don't have the ability to from where I am right here. Uh, well, who's like, worrying about this the admin function? You can give admin function to David. They can do that. Without the admin function, you cannot do it. So allow him. To the admin. Well, I think it would be maybe more appropriate if the council president would. Um, David, you, you, you offered and we accepted, so go ahead. Uh, okay. Let me get to the... Uh... David, accept it. No, I cannot share the screen. I'm tapping it and it's not working. Uh, hold on, let me try to do it. You know, you know things are bad when when a lawyer is trying to do this for everybody. Um, I think one of the administrators has to do it. Not not business administrator, Carol. I mean, I know, I know, I know. Okay. I gave I gave the may. Everyone has the right to. Uh, I'm looking at it. I actually don't seem to have the ability to do that here. No, it does not. All right, I have to open up my system preferences. Give me a minute. Um, okay, I, I can just give some other information while you're trying to get that, Mayor, on other, on, on uh, just to, okay. to help. Uh, so um, while the mayor's trying to pull up those documents, I had, a, um, the chief was, um, did a great job along with the uh, patrolman Heckinger in uh, getting us um, the comparisons to the three vendors that they're looking at for uh, the 911 system. Um, so you'll see with with that range of, oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's it's, uh, it's shocking that I actually was able to do that. Uh, well, I I gave I, I gave oh, everyone the stuff behind it. Okay, it looks like I have it looks like I have the right document up, but um, let me close everything else that I have here. So. There you go. Okay. okay. How am I doing, guys? Good. Great. Mayor, if you control that, I'll let people in because it'll pop up and you won't be able to do both. Okay. So right now, um, everyone sees one document, right? With the yellow line across. Yeah. Yes. I don't see it. You don't see it on the screen? No. I just, uh, let me check something here. I see it. Change your um, change your view, and I'll stop giving I'll stop giving Zoom advice now because I think I've I've reached the summit of, of Zoom. You know, I, I think the I think the problem with this document, and in, in all fairness to the public, is that it's based on budgets and not on actuals for prior years. So. You know, looking at the prior years doesn't matter because something like the legal line says a million three thirty-five, and in fact it was two point one million because the numbers shifted on the different line items. So I, you know, I've asked for this, and I think it's important to make decisions. You need to know what the prior years actuals were, not their budgets. And yes, I do have a very extensive document that was given to me, uh, the preliminary budget. Uh, detailed line item breakdowns, but in order to not make this my job, 
it would be a lot easier if this summary sheet would be comparing to the actuals and not to budgeted numbers for the last two years. Because, you know, like I said, just one line item alone, which is the COA legal fees, says a million three thirty five or something like that for 2020, if you scroll down. And, and then it says 2021 budget, a million eight. But in fact, the real numbers for 2020 were 2.1 million. So well, it makes it hard to really see where we spent our money when this is what we're showing the public. This is so not- I, I, Yeah, so I think we're doing this uh, apples to apples as we always do it. Is that correct, Chris and Carol? No, this is not apples to apples. It, well, no, no, this is from year to year. This is the way we always do it. And the most important thing here uh, is the 2021 budget itself, uh, which is based on uh, the, the prior year and, and this year's outlook, right? It's based on the actuals, right? So you're, I mean, look, I, I, I think the issue you really have with me here is that I have a tax decrease and you killed us last year in a tax increase. Oh, not at all, Matt. Okay, let's put that aside. Not at all. I would like to see them have a bigger increase. Well, because that would have been possible if you didn't pay out one half a million dollars. And we have less legal fees. So yes, I, I'm very happy it's a decrease. I expected a much bigger decrease. I see. So it's very hard to tell where the numbers are when you're comparing to budget instead of actual. Okay. Uh, is there any specific line item that you have an issue with? Yeah. The, my biggest issue is with the legal fees. I think that money should be going back right. to the residents. Uh, that's my opinion. And I've made it clear every time. And you know, this right now says a million eight against a million three thirty five. I mean, I don't have this document in front of me. I'm going off memory. Um, so it appears that last year was actually even less than what we're budgeting for this year. And in fact, I know that Chris and, and Carol and everybody you know who's on the finance team knows that that's not the actual number for last year. That was that's the budget. The actual was two point one. So you know it's very hard to look at this and know really what was spent on what line items because money was moved around over the year to take care of the fact that we had overage in our legal fees. So my, my two issues are not with anything else on the budget, except for the legal fees on both line items, which you know there are two here. One is specifically for COA, and the other one is for several. And I'm really not sure because I haven't seen a breakdown as to how that number either. Okay, does, does anyone else have any questions or issues? Yes, uh, you know, I. I would agree with with uh, Councilman Sabari because actually, in my experience on, in a school budget, um, first of all, there are some lines that are not needed. So we we have gone through the process of zero based uh, budgeting. And the other thing is that I have any time I always get the actual. So like if I've spent forty thousand if I'm budgeted forty thousand dollars and I actually spent thirty six thousand dollars or more than forty thousand dollars that's reflected in the actual and that actual is so important to the budgeting for next year for the next year so I mean this the, these are I'm looking at 2020 and 2019 and I mean I hate to say it those numbers are kind of useless uh, if we had the actual, in 2019 and the actual in 2020 and not the budgeted, it certainly would make more sense, I think to me, uh, as to how much you're gonna budget for for this year. Um, I mean, maybe in the next uh, meeting, if there's another meeting, we can have the actuals and then, then we can plan, uh, I think a, a lot better and move money around accordingly. If, if, if like the, 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 the tree planting, uh, a committee didn't use all of their budget, well, then why should we give them, unless they have that proposal, unless they propose, to, uh, they have a project and they can explain it. Uh, does, does anyone else have any issues or questions? I, I have one question. Uh, I, I do, uh, Mayor. Hi, I can't see. So go ahead, uh, Councilman. Yeah, I just, um, just relative to the um, context from our last meeting to this meeting, um, I know Councilwoman Sabari, who was the finance chair last year, uh, mentioned that she thinks legal fees should be zero over uh, exchange. Uh, that's what was written. 
Um, I think we got to be practical. We're willing to compromise here. Uh, everyone is, everyone's reasonable. Um, just tell us what you think it should be. As you know, there are continuing legal obligations that are going on, uh, including potentially outstanding um, payables that um, you know, could be ruled on by a judge. So you know, we, we, have to, we have to play it safe here. Um, I think um, just the fact that we're delivering a return, uh, a, 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 um, a deduction to the residents, I think is, is a positive step in the right direction. Um, but please propose something that's practical um, in terms of the legal line. Um, relative to actuals, yeah, I mean, I think we should have actuals there to compare, but I'll leave that to the um, borough administrator. Um, she's handling this. So, um, you know, Ms. Sabari, 1.8, I also want to emphasize to the residents, I think over the last two years, we spent $3.6 million um, in, in, in legal fees. And um, some of those legal fees should not have been spent. And um, some of it should be returned to the borough. And, uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. We have yeah, to- This is a budget workshop, not a political meeting. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a political meeting. I'm just stating a fact. Um, my, my we, we spent we spent three point six million. My opinion is some of it should come back to the borough. Okay, one's a fact, one's an opinion. I uh, I would like to. Councilman Wu, I I agree with you that the borough should be getting money back in the sense of our budget should have gone down. Okay, that COA line item was to fight COA. Okay, and that's all that is. All the other litigations that you're referring to because this new council has got lots of litigations that they're starting now. So yes, and that's another line item. I think it has 590,000, it's not up on the screen. So beside the million eight, there's another 590,000. I'm aware of what we spent in legal fees and so is the public because we made it very clear that that would all change in 2021. But for some reason, in this budget, it's not. So tonight in closed session, there were certain things that we discussed that were new to me. So I can think about whether we need some money in that line item, but our own attorney said that at this point, he really couldn't tell us what we needed. So to, for you to expect me to opine on what we need is unfair because I would if I had the insight to exactly what we needed it for. Even the 590, there's no breakdown. Most cases were settled, you know? So only thing that should be in there now is, you know, new cases that you're starting. And if somebody wants to break that down, that's the way it should be handled. I'm not saying whether we should spend it or not. I'm saying, tell me how we come up with those estimates. That's not my job. I'm not the borough business administrator. I'm not finance. So, you know, that's not my job to do, Billy. So Chris, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was the surplus. Again, I see that actually the decrease to the residents actually went down. Um, it was more in the last one. And I'm trying to figure out how much are we letting sit in surplus in this budget from the monies we collected from LG last year that went into surplus. Why aren't we giving that back to the taxpayers? Ms. McMorrow, um, if you want to Say I'd something like to answer that question. Uh, well, there were, there were several questions. So um, I'll do my best on the ones that I can answer and then I'll let Chris jump in. Obviously it would have been helpful that Paul was here. I'm hoping nothing happened because that's not like him to not uh, check my email if he wrote back. Uh, it's not like him to not be here, especially since you know we, we had changed the date to, to um, knowing what he needed to be done tonight. Um, okay, let me, let me start with the, uh, my, the, the answer to the legal fees. And uh, I, I'm just gonna give answers that are factual ones and nothing else other than facts. Councilman Moore, I apologize. I gave you the wrong numbers when you called me for legal numbers before. It actually, they spent $4.3 million in legal fees in two years. Right. Councilman Sabari just corrected the number for 2020. I thank her for bringing that to our attention. Um, so if you add the two years, you spent uh, the, the, the council, uh, the borough spent $4.3 million in, in two years. 
Uh, okay, that's number one. Number two. What does that have to do with the current? The, excuse me. What does that have to do with the current budget? You say you're just stating I am, that. I, I, I personally I'm told you. So, Ms. Sabara, you asked a question, and Ms. McMorrow is going to answer it. Yeah, and that's I, not the question I asked, but, but thank you, you Mario. But you asked several another, questions, but I, I asked questions. how you estimate a million eight. Okay, you asked several questions. I'm trying to get there, but when you keep interrupting, it breaks my train okay, of thought. Well, it makes it very not difficult. answering my question and diverting to other things. Uh, I'm not doing that, ma'am. I didn't ask you what we paid in prior years. Okay, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to refrain from any further comments until the next speaker is done. Okay. You could have the floor again. That's, okay. how, we, that's okay. how we operate in a civilized society. I, well, you know, you're far from civil, but let's- Here, here go you go again, interrupting me now, please. Um, I only brought that up because they were talking about actuals and I wanted to have the actual numbers correctly cited. And I apologize for giving the wrong one to Councilman Wu, Council President Wu. So that two years, actual numbers spent on legal fees, total 4.3 million. Um, I will ask Ms. Duffy to send me in the morning, first thing, immediately, the actual numbers for the last two years, because clearly you must have had all these numbers already ready when you did your budget last year, because I would not think that you're asking me to do something different than you would not have required of yourself last year. And I don't want anybody to be doing double work. So Ms. Duffy, please send those, the entire 2020 budget comparison to 19 actual numbers to me first thing in the morning. I will add in whatever else with Chris. Chris, um, I'm gonna need your help in getting that because I've never seen it done that way before, but if that's what they're requesting, that's what we have to, to get them. Um, Would you agree that that makes I'm sense, going, Sarah? Ma'am, you're interrupting me again. I'm, I'm asking just, you if you yeah, agree that we should be basing it on actuals. Well, I'm gonna, can I respond? Because you keep- Yes, that's what well, I'm asking. Okay. I'm not answering no, any of my questions. You will be muted, Ms. Sabari, if you don't let this. I'm sure, I will. Okay. Um. I I I've sent you actual uh, worksheets showing actual numbers and showing actual spending for so for all of you to say that you have not received actual numbers, they may not be in the format that you are now requiring, but you all, every single one of you, received the actual numbers. That I did. I, because you're interrupting me again. Because, because I, I said I did receive them, Carol. You're saying that I said I didn't receive you're them. You're saying now, and Councilman De Gregorio is saying that they're not on this paper. They're not and on this might... paper. Okay, well, okay, so you are now requiring a new document to be created, but I would assume that you made that same document last year, Councilman Sabari, when you were the finance chair and required the prior borough administrator to be doing the same thing that you're asking of me now, because I've never seen it before, but I'm sure she has it and she'll give it to me in the morning. Okay, I will go further. If there are going to be any changes that you will have to vote on tonight and you do not want your budget to be um, um, proposed in time for the April meeting and you need to let Chris and Mr. Garbarini know immediately because at the last council meeting, you had a date of um, April 14th to introduce your budget, okay? That's, that, that's the next thing. I've, I've done everything I needed to do to get you to this point. You're gonna postpone introduction and wanna have a late budget introduced. It's not on me, that's on you. Um, next, next question, as to the money for LG, we talked about that the last time. I'll let Chris go into this with further detail but whatever monies are collected, there's also portions that, um, I don't know how that's affected by payment to the school and the county, Chris. So the, the numbers that the councilwoman uh, um, is, is referencing, I don't think that those numbers are correct. Um, and there's also differences of opinion on whatever the assessed value is on um, the LG building as well. So, um, in closed session without talking about closed session, it was um, brought up to everyone's attentions, the significant um, liabilities that we may be facing for certain items. 
I appreciate everyone not disclosing that out in the public, but those are liabilities that we are aware of. And once you are aware of those liabilities, you, uh, your fiduciary duty is to act accordingly and to propose real numbers in your budget because you have knowledge of situations that can occur. Separately, you asked for the line of legal fees where you have the 590. One of the things that I thought most important that we took care of, myself and Janice, which had not been done to the degree that we did this year was the not to exceed. And I actually based the majority off of that line number off of the not to exceed that we now have in place. What are the not to exceed for? Tax appeal attorney, labor attorney, borough attorney, um, all of the basics that, um, that we all know are faced in, um, in, you know, in the borough and, and, and with this budget. So if you are now asking me that you want to see the not to exceed for each individual that was not articulated properly before, there's no problem because the finance department has those numbers. So the issue is that here is that whenever we get here to this point, no, nobody wants to articulate what they truly want. I have okay. no problem sending you the not I very clearly articulate what I want. I don't think you did, ma'am, because you, you don't listen it. and you don't have experience as a borough administrator. So that's not true. I will, I will articulate it but once again. Point of order, Mayor. She's talking about my yeah, job. So, so, so please don't speak about me, I am not experienced as so, a borough. Ex I'm not. Yeah, going okay, to look, Ms. Sabari has trouble distinguishing between working on a council and just trashing people politically, which is what she just did. Yes. So I'm going to caution you, Ms. Sabari, do not do that here. When you're not here, you and your friends could write all your newsletters, do all the crazy stuff that you guys do. You know, do, do whatever you want, dress up like dinosaurs, run around town, be stupid, but not here, not in my meeting and not with our employees, okay? And, and by the way, you, you have in between meetings, plenty of work days where you could actually ask for things to be presented. And this goes to the entire council. Don't wait until the night of the meeting to start making demands on people. Do your work before the meeting. So when we all come together, we're actually talking more about, is that the right dollar amount or not? And, and you don't have to be researching here. If you really wanna do your jobs, but, but I kind of feel you don't, you just want to be your grandstanding and trashing people, uh, which is par for the course for you. Okay, Mario, I, I'm going to cut you off because you know what, you're right. Uh, you, you were inappropriate when you spoke to the borough administrator just now. I'm, I'm here for a budget meeting, okay? It's been a long day for all of us. We all have jobs. It is now nine o'clock at night. If you want to speak to the budget, speak to the budget. If you want to speak about other things, I don't want to hear it. Um, Ms. McMorrow, did you want to continue with Chris? I just wanted to um, just talk about the capital ordinances where I thought that um, myself, Chris, and Andy and Steve Robert made a lot of headway today. And um, just wanted to inform the council what we were able to do. Um, I'll let Chris go into more detail of from the ordinance and what has did, to be fixed. Did I change the page that I'm sharing? Um, Chris, that's on the, hold on. Well, well, you're actually not gonna see it on the page because it's not costing the taxpayers any money. Right, so, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. So, so what, what we did, meaning myself, Chris, um, Steve uh, and Andy was, you know, we looked at what the capital requests were and we went back to our capital ordinances and see where we could find a fit and where we would be able to use the monies in those capital ordinances already and not have to incur extra um, monies to be placed in the capital ordinances. So what we were able to do was, let's just start with the, um, the project for the bathrooms and, uh, I'm happy to say that this year, the bathroom projects will be completed. 
Uh, Andy explained to me that it, um, it's going to be a three-part project. There's the lobby bathrooms, police bathroom and lockers, and the woman's bathroom and locker. And based on this is it what here. we have in the ordinances, and I, so sorry. If you look at the screen, is this the amount? Oh, that's the, that, that's that's the grant. That's the grant we're receiving. Okay. Yes. So based on the monies that were in the prior ordinances that we had put since um, actually 2015, we put monies away from 15, 17, and 18, and the grant that we're receiving, we actually don't need uh, to put any money into this budget, any any more money into the budget, but we will be um, completing the project, which is a pretty big project. And um, obviously the police department is very excited about getting that done. So that's the first um, item. You're not gonna see it there other than the grant reference and um, okay. when we're done there. So uh, then we have, then we also have the roads, which you're not gonna see again in the budget, but we have, and as for roads, I wanna remind everyone, we have the Summit Avenue project, um, we have the Riverside Cooperative project, and we have the Fifth Street project. If the council is going to deem that they wanna go forward with the Fifth Street project, which had been started, I think about 2016 mayor. So again, we're utilizing monies and grant money, monies in the capital ordinances and grants that we have received both for Fifth Street and Summit Street. And it, there will be no additional costs to the taxpayers for getting those uh, well, Riverside Cooperative and Summit Street done um, and just the design only phase for Fifth Street. So again, no additional monies in the budget, but the project is going to get done. And the only item that we needed to talk further about, I tried to reach Mark one more time. I don't know if Councilman Moore, Councilman Farrow, I have asked that they speak with Mark. Um, right, he had a- yeah. uh, Yes, I, uh, I did. This afternoon I spoke okay. with him. Okay, so let me just tell you where I had left off with him. And if either of you could jump in, I greatly appreciate it. On, on Mark's wish list, um, he had a page that was numbered one, two, and three. I mean, sorry, he had one page yet, and his wish yeah. list was one, two, and three. According to the capital ordinance that Chris and I found of $135,000, I think we can complete all three of those items. I just wasn't able to connect with Mark at the end of the day to confirm that it was the right part of the uh, truck that he wanted. Well, but, that, but what I'm noticing here is is that uh, the one, two, and three, the small mason dump truck uh, is the one that the total is $65,000. I don't know where you are. Uh, well, it's the DPW. Um, where, where, where are you? On this page here? Where are you? I mean, I don't know. Oh, no, doing. not on that page. No. Okay, so I don't, I, the, the one that the, uh, is showing right now is, is a different page. Okay, so you have to help me to understand what oh, you're looking for. Uh, let me see. That's the one that says uh, multi purpose ordinance. Where do you see that? No, it's not It's not a page. It's, uh, it was sent uh, separate. It's not together with those. No, it's not here. This, no. Mr. Uh, uh, Ramon? Yes. Councilman Farrow, um, do you mind if I jump in here? Well, sure. With this? Um, so um, Mr. Mr. Neville did give me a call today um, to update his capital uh, number. And um, we have three garbage trucks. One of them is a 1995, so it's 26 years old already. The other two are 2013 and 2015. Um, previously, he had thought he could get away with just saving the borough some bucks and um, purchasing um, just the uh, body and chassis and reusing the, um, the um, you know, the actual container itself. Apologize if that's the not the right verbiage, but he came back and said, you know, we're, we're much better off to replace uh, everything and, and get a new truck retrofitting parts um just doesn't make sense so that that adds an additional hundred thousand 
which you know, 5% down is $5,000. Um, the other one, the other two items that he had, uh, he wants uh, to maintain, which is the small dump truck. The former dump truck from 2001 is already out of service. Um, the new dump truck he had priced at 65,000, which has been in his capital budget since the beginning when we first started this process. Uh, the last item, is the small 2013 dump truck. He needed a new body. He had 15,000 for that. He got it priced out and got a more accurate number for $12,000. So we're saving $3,000 there. So net net, it's an increase of 100 minus the 3,000 um, price. So, so 97,000 more in capital for, um, for, for DPW. Does that, does that confirm your understanding, um, Councilman Farrow? Well, what, I'm, what I understand is the, uh, the one, two, and three uh, is one thing is 65,000, the other one is 15, and the other one is 100. Yeah, the, fifth, the 15 has been reduced to 12. Uh -huh. Okay, so with what the confusion was, Council President, is that originally Mark had sent the paper that had the three numbers, which was 7,500, 100, and 15, yeah. okay? That's what I, I have right now. Which I had forwarded to Chris. So now you're saying that his, the 65,000, which originally he had not marked as one of his one, two, and three, is one, one, of, is one of the one, two, and no, three. The number two is 65,000. Okay, so, so Chris and I did not have that final, like I said, I couldn't get in touch with Mark to verify the three to ensure which three they were. Um, so Chris, um, the hundred, the hundred, and then let's just keep it at 15 for a second. I understand they saved 3000, I appreciate that. Um, the hundred, the 15 and the 65 comes to a total of 180. Um, That's correct. Okay, number. Chris, we, ha we had 135 in that ordinance. Remember, you know what ordinance I'm talking about, right? Yes. Okay. So, and I don't know how much we wanted to add in if we had to have Steve Rogat's fees included in there, I'll leave that up to you. I know he's been saying to average $5,000, but if it's a, an appropriation from an ordinance that already has money in it, I don't, I don't know how, you know how the fees work. But so we're off between the 135 and the 180 then um, by, by 45,000 is what I'm seeing is the difference. But if Councilman Wu said he, you know, they got a $3,000 yeah. redu reduction, and that 45 is 42, Chris. But the fees might increase it back up again. So yeah. I'll leave that to your I, judgment, Chris, on how to handle that. I, I hope we have the whole council support for DPW. They, they had a huge list, as I mentioned last time. The, these are real needs. 1995 garbage truck that's used uh, every day in some parts of the year. So hopefully we can all uh, be on the same page with that, like we were with the police. Um, capital. And thank you both for getting through to him. I appreciate helping out with that. That was, uh, that was good. Um, and also then he had the $40,000 uh, item for the, for the maintenance in the fields that he, he had shared with myself and I think Councilman um, Will, I think he, that day he shared it to you and also to Councilman DiGregorio and Councilman yeah. Trubis. So huh. that's a separate 40. But um, as to the calculation with Chris and I, so there's a, there's a $45,000 different Chris, $45,000 different Chris, um, you know, amount that we have to relook at. I, I have um, one more item. Um, can you hear me? Uh, I just want to make sure that Chris yep. can Chris? Yeah, I have $85,000 now for DPW. Okay. Oh, okay, wonderful, thank you. So, um, Borough Administrator McMorrow, can I ask um, one question? Just one other item which came in at the last minute. Um, I have not spoken to anyone on the council about this, nor yourself. Um, we did get a price. We, we've been looking into, I've been looking into um, finding some kind of help desk ticketing system. Yes. Um, I mentioned earlier, gotten some referrals from the mayor uh, at some other towns. But anyway, the software uh, we got some pricing on. Um, it looks like it's a, I, I would, it's $8,000 per year 
Um, so that would be the very basic module um, for a system called GovPilot. And that very simple module would allow you know, our residents to, to put in tickets and, and to allocate those tickets accordingly to um, staffing uh, within the borough to, to, to address. Um, the price goes, I think the full package is double that with a lot more modules. So buying one module isn't that cost effective, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, we have to be able to execute on it and we only have limited resources. So, you know, my recommendation would be to find a place for that. Um, I do think it would be a tremendous tool for, for our residents and, and, and borough William, ministry alike. William, can I uh, say something quickly? Yeah, and I know, uh, Councilman De Gregorio. I know you mentioned last time that you had some thoughts here. Um, that I, I do, and I, I honestly, you know, I've already set something up. All I have to do is make it public, and it didn't cost anything. So I don't know why we're spending eight hundred, uh, eight thousand, or, or whatever on this Gov thing. I mean, you, that's an annual subscription. I've got a, something set up on a website already that you can send a message right to the whoever I program in to send. So I don't know what we're wasting our time on uh, getting these Councilman, programs. Councilman Di Gregorio, we mentioned this last time. Um, you haven't shared it with anybody. So uh, I'll share it right now. I'll make it public. Okay. You want to see? It's very simple. If someone sees a pothole, if someone sees a pothole, if someone see, sees garbage, if someone sees uh, uh, mattresses out front, all they have to do is go to this particular web page, put it in, send it out. It get, a copy will go to the borough administrator. A copy goes to the um, to to the building department. Whoever you choose to triage this. So I don't know what we need all this fancy software ask, for. It's very uh, simple. Can I ask a question, Mr. DiGregorio? Now, sure. DiGregorio, uh, in your system, does it provide for accountability in terms of things that are completed, when they're completed, who completed it? Uh, it, it absolutely. What, absolutely. What, what we're trying to do here is create efficiencies uh, by having um, our staff, the borough staff, be able to have more of a dashboard outlook to their responsibilities. And um, it's also a management tool, obviously, for accountability. Um, I think that if you were really so confident in what you've done, and it's not just spaghetti code, that you would have shared it with us in between meetings. But in fact, you wait until the night of the meeting to tell me that you've got the golden ticket. And so, yes, we will look at it and we will compare it side by side. Councilman Wu is very open-minded uh, and, and we'll, we'll see what yours can do versus uh, what, what something that's been uh, professionally out there and highly recommended to us could do. And then we'll make a decision. Um, well, Councilman, well, Wu, if I see your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, I, I would just like to know who's hosting the, this uh, software. It's very important about it's very important that we that the data is secured and not just going out to anybody and anybody has access to who is sending it. If you have an email system, it's secure. It's as secure as the money that you've paid for the new email system that you, you have in place. Right, but leverage, your email, leverage your email system and uh, you can, the, the borrow site can host it. It's Any site can host it. I'm surprised, uh, Councilman Katrubis, you were supposed to be the expert on, on uh, technology that you didn't come up with something. I have you know. plenty of ideas, but I don't feel like bringing them up here tonight as the mayor had suggested, but. Okay, I, so listen, come up with something. Let's, let's see what I'm you can not, come I, up I, with I'm side by asking, side. So we, we did actually, we, we, we had a nice session with um, a, a fellow mayor's um, administrator a few weeks ago and, and Councilman Wu and I went from there with different possibilities and thank you Councilman Wu for for running down um, the different possibilities and evaluating them. Um, apparently Mr. Di Gregorio thinks that his is better than uh, what we have found and uh, look I've done a lot of technology deals and the last thing I want to do is have uh, non-working technology or spaghetti code um, and and um, I, I wish you would have shared it with us, David. We would have. I'll be glad to share it with you. 
I'll be glad to share. All you have to do is ask. Listen, I was not called in. No, I don't have to ask because I didn't know you actually had it. So I was not called in. It's more for you to tell us that you've got this magic that you want to share with us. Maybe, maybe if you allowed me into the administration building, I would, and we had a better working relationship. We have a great working relationship. So it's. I think it's probably an email system, so it's not like a garbage can that you need to lug up three flights of stairs, right? Go ahead, Ms. McMorrin. Uh, I just have some questions for Councilman Di Gregorio on this subject, if you would be kind enough to answer them. Um, it, can you please let me know, because I know the borough attorney will ask, like, what type of a site is it? How is it secured? Who would hold the passcodes? Because the borough is not, I, I don't you believe use the borough, use the borough yeah. website. Use the borough website. You can use the borough website. Just copy the code in there and you're fine. What, what other boroughs are using the system? Fine. Listen, if you want to enter into a, an annual $8,000, $16,000 a year contract, you know, go ahead. You've got control. I don't think it's money well spent, honestly. You know, you enter into these uh, annual things uh, and it adds up. And honestly, I agree. $96 is a bag of shells. I think it's kind of insulting to all the restaurant, the residents that you're going to give back only $96. I mean, Really, uh, you know, when we have all this money laying around, uh, let's look and sharpen our pencils and let's, let's give a substantial reduction. We're done with all the litigation. I will say that I already see litigation and, we, and that reminds me, we really need to have a year to date uh, expenditure of what, the, what we're spending in litigation. I mean, I already see, uh, you know, things going uh, against this one and that one, and it's all costing money. And is it really worth it? Is it worth it to go after people when you, you know, when you really want to conserve? I mean, honestly, I'm a, Demo I'm, I'm a Democrat in name, but I'm very conservative at the same time. I, you know, I want to see the money spent well and yeah. spent on things that are going to increase the quality of life uh, for the residents. So tell me when you're finished. I'm finished. Okay, so uh, it, it's really just heartwarming to hear you speak fiscally conservative. When uh, you were on this council for uh, half a month in December, and in that half month, you approved over half a million dollars worth of legal fees to be paid. And, and you really didn't seem to be uh, singing from that same hymnal at that time. But you know, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, that you've got some redemption here and you've figured out fiscal conservatism, and I'm going to help you figure out even further. So thank you. We'll work together on that. If, if you want to show us what you've done, be my guest, but d don't expect me to know what you're working on and then expect me to ask you what you're working on to see it, because I have no way of knowing what you're doing. We, what we did was we did the logical thing. We went out to vendors who are tried and proven, and actually uh, you know, the $8,000 a year that you would spend is probably going to save you more than $8,000 in, in, in costs and efficiencies. So uh, let's evaluate them. Okay, can I ask a question on the budget? Is, uh, is Mrs. McMorrow finished? Um, I was just going to, well, we finished with DPW capital. The, there was a capital in, um, increase by the fire, which was about $20,000. That was brought to your attention as well. Chris and I went over uh, the, the, the police's Last, last meeting, it came up as to how or if we could handle one of the pieces that were in, in their request uh, and regarding the, uh, the body cameras. And we were able to figure that out as well. We have two scenarios. Um, I'll let Chris speak about, about that um, when he picks up. And as for capital, I think that that covers everything. Uh, Councilman Wu requested that the um, improvement to, to the field, uh, Witty Field be included. That's in there as well. And checking technology stayed the same. I believe that covers it for capital items, unless anyone has any questions specifically. Now would be their time to, uh, the phone, and the phones are in there as well. So what the, about so sorry. Go ahead. the um, I looked at the capital plan 
I don't necessarily take issue with it. Um, the actual cost to this particular budget is is now what? I don't know if there was a change tonight. Is it a hundred thousand? Is it one hundred and sixty thousand? What What's the number? What is the five percent number that's in this budget now? For the capital, one hundred and twenty-five. One hundred twenty-five. Okay, so it's 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 not a big number. Um, the million three for the field, I, I just don't know what's in that number. Like, what is, what are we doing? I don't think anything has been 100% set, set. Obviously, that's up for council discussion. Um, but it was, it was based on a plan that had been prepared a few years ago. Um, I believe Council Mamou followed up on that. It's just, it's for lights. I'm not, I believe there's a small portion uh, in that included for turf in the backfield and the lights are for the back portion, not in the other, not in the other residential homes. Um, and it was a middle ground, um, it was a middle ground plan, trying to find a middle ground, I, I should say, to, um, to have everybody be happy, you know. Okay, so Council, Councilman Wu, it yes. seems uh, that was your project. So when you get a moment, if you could just shoot me the breakdown of the million three and what you think those costs are for, how much for lights, how much for turf. Sure. Um, yeah, just, just, to, to, just to clarify, um, right now, you know, when, when, you, when Borough Administrator McMorrow mentioned middle ground, I think middle ground previously and now is actually a bit different. Previously, there was discussions about part of the field being turfed using organic cork for the turf. Um, really, this is a, my thinking is at the moment, my opinion is an even more conservative um, one baby step at a time and, and to really make sure our baseball program has at the minimum lights. Um, and then just some basic improvements around the park. I know Councilman DeGregorio mentioned the dog park. Um, that's in there as well. And, um, that's pretty much it. But okay. yes, I, I'd be happy to follow up with you. Thank you. One of, um, one of the good can I, I'm sorry. Second, yeah, David? Yeah, um, sure. I have to say, I, I still think the number on legal fees is high. And as far as the, the, the other number uh, and the not to exceed, that, that wasn't, you know, I assumed that that was taken into account as it should be when doing your budget. But what I was more concerned about was any other litigations that are going on that don't fall under the COA line item, which COA line item is separate and apart. I've confirmed that with Chris, that the only things in there should be for COA. Uh, the other line item, in fact, should include any outstanding litigation that we have that hasn't hit the GIF uh, deductible or is not part of GIF. And we have to expect to come out of pocket. So that is uh, for clarification, that is what I'm looking for on that particular legal fee line item. The COA is, is very clear, it should be COA. Um, the other question I had for Chris, which didn't get addressed, was the LG taxes. My understanding is that the surplus in taxes from last year for money that LG owed us, which does not go back to the school or the county is my understanding, just like when we do an abatement of taxes going back, the school nor the county chips in to give us back the money that we're giving back to our corporate and residential uh, residents. So we had this additional million one thirty six four twenty seven forty four 427 44 in tax revenue that went into surplus in 2020. What I don't understand is why we are not giving that back to the residents, it's tax surplus. I, I don't understand. I, and Chris, I, I'd like to understand why you feel that that needs to stay in surplus and not be given back to the residents. I, I can answer, I, there, I think there were a, a bunch of questions and that is one of the ones that I will answer. Um, going back to the first meeting that we had, the, the, the first uh, budget prep meeting on March 2nd, I had circulated a 16-page document. Um, that 16-page document had the 2020 budget, the actuals, the amount spent, the amount transferred, the emergency authorizations, 
It gave you the detail of everything that happened by line item for 2020. Uh, since that meeting, I've been keeping a very short list of changes that happened since then. So um, I did circulate the paid, the actuals numbers from 2020 by line item. The reason why I have a budget summary document is the, the, the only intent for that budget summary document is to provide the tax levy increase and decrease, which is strictly based on the adopted budgets, which is why those columns are in that format. Uh, when you get the state budget document, uh, which is uh, admittedly a little um, bulky to read, it's a, a long document and there's only a couple of numbers on each page. Uh, but it is the state document that does have the 2020 actuals, uh, the 2020 budget and the 2021 um, adopted budget as well. Uh, so that is what I, I, I replicated on that first go around. And then ever since then, I've just been circulating that short list of changes uh, since there were only um, counting 11 line items that changed since March 2nd. Um, so I can, and, and that's a, and that's a working document that I have. So I can just, you know, rather than circulate. That one, how many pages? Pages. I'm sorry, that one was 16 pages. 16. And, but couldn't we in fact do the same thing that we have here and it put in the actual numbers for 2020 so we could see where the actual money laid out at the end of the day. A budget is exactly what it is, right? A budget. So I know that when you look at the 2021 budget, you know exactly what you're looking at. You're not going to look at the 2020 budget to come up with the 2021 budget. You're going to look at the 2020 actuals, just like Carol, I'm sure, is going to do. And, and anybody who's working on this budget from the inside is always going to look at actuals. And then they're going to take into account what changes have happened. Are we still in litigation? Are we not in litigation? You know, do we have less police officers? Do we have more police officers? I mean, I'm, I'm sure I don't need to reiterate how to do that. Um, I'm just saying that this particular page that's sitting here really doesn't mean anything to, to the public. So I don't see why it's there. The numbers are not what was spent and the budget is what you're budgeting. And I get that. And I'm sure you feel strongly on most line items that they're budgeted actually, because you looked at the actual contracts and, and everything else. You've always done a great job and that's not being questioned. So my questions, which I did address to you separately in an email, were more along the lines of whether you had an opinion as to whether we needed a million eight or not, whether that line item just pertained to COA legal fees, which you clarified for me that it does. So sitting here, it would mean that we're still budgeting a million eight for COA. Um, and as far as the surplus, that's something else you also clarified for me. I asked you how much was the excess in surplus. So I'm just wondering why, and it's not your decision to make. So don't, don't think I'm saying it's your decision. I'm saying, is there a reason why we have to take this tax revenue, which we should have gotten in last year against that budget and not give it back to the taxpayers? You, you, you kind of you hit the nail on the head there with it's it's not my decision. Um, the, the way that surplus works is, um, you know, it, if you can use it uh, and then you're kind of dependent on the amount that you're going to replenish in the following year. We know that we're not going to have a million dollar tax surplus in 2021. We know that we're not going to replenish a million dollars in our surplus. Uh, because we don't have another million dollar added assessment that we're expecting. Um, that means that yes, you can use it this year and you can reduce taxes. And then the likelihood is next year, you will uh, start the year in a million dollar hole because you're not gonna be able to use that million dollars again. And you'll have to come up with a million dollars of either additional revenue or uh, expense cuts because this the million dollars would not directly offset something. So um, the, the short answer is absolutely, you can use it, you can reduce taxes. We have another, uh, on, based on the document that you have in front of you, you have another about $730,000 of room if you wanted to deplete your available cash surplus to zero, you, could, um, you can utilize another $730,000. I just would never recommend doing that because 
of the impact that it would have on your 2022 budget. Um, you know, so again, 100% governing body decision. Um, you know, and and with the 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 uh, where we're going to land, you know, with our you know comfortably with surplus is is going to be a product of that decision. Uh, we have been spending more of our of our um, our budget each year. So to your point, with um, with the COA specifically, last year's budget was one point three million dollars. As you know, we spent closer to two point one. Well, that money was transferred out of a, a lot of other accounts, including the other, you know, the legal account and and some other accounts. Which means that that's a lot less money that we're going to have at the end of this year that lapses to surplus. Um, so it, it's it is a, it's a it's a moving target. Um, I, I wish I had uh, you know that crystal ball answer for you, but you know it's. The, the higher that number gets, the more unlikely it will be that we'll be able to repeat it in 2021. Uh, at 1.1, 1.2 million dollars, I'm fairly confident that we'll we'll be okay in 2021. Um, if we go up to 1.8, uh, where we're allowed to be, I don't I, I don't know that I'll have that same confidence anymore. Um, the I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Chris, what I'm not understanding is that, so what you're saying is if we gave the taxpayers back the LG tax revenue from last year, okay, um, which is now in the current budget, so that's not going to change. You're not going to lose a million dollars by giving that million dollars back because we now have even more revenue from LG in the 2021 tax assessments. So. Like, I don't see how you're saying, you know, we'll never recoup that million dollars. No, we won't. And it should have been applied to a 2020, but it didn't hit the tax roll in time. So that revenue never came in. So we've always planned on having that to give back to the taxpayers in 21. So the current budget, right? I, I don't we remember you ever me that you're planning on that, giving anything back. And, can you uh, can you let me finish, please? No, but you're, you're making a statement. No, and you need to let me finish, please. Who plan to give anything back to taxpayers? You guys took and took and took. Okay. And all of a sudden, you want to give back? Can I please talk to Chris Numbers? You're you're talking politics. I'm talking numbers. No, no, but you're 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 so making, Chris. You're just pontificating. Chris, it, it makes no the sense. The only way next year's budget would need a million dollars from the surplus is if we spent two point eight million dollars on COA legal fees. Because right now we have 1.8. So technically, if we don't need that, let's say you keep that 1.8 in, which I don't agree with, but let's say you keep it there. Then you have a million eight to spend on legal fees. Hopefully that's not what's happening. So you'll have money that will go into surplus. So if you're gonna have $700,000 left in surplus, so I don't even remember the last budget year that had $700,000 $700, left in surplus. It's always been taken down pretty low because that's what needed to be done. And at the end of the year, it would get replenished. So, you know, it's, it's really not fair to say that if we distribute that million dollars that we could be at risk of not having it for the following year budget. Because this was money that is now taken into account in the current year budget because LG is on the tax roll. So I don't think that's a fair analogy. You know, originally the last time they said, well, you know, maybe people will retire. But if you look at, you know, who's left and how much money is out there, that's really not the issue. Like we don't need to keep this money sitting in surplus. Now, I'm not asking for, you know, for you to agree with me or disagree with me, but you can agree or disagree with the numbers, whether we give it back or not. I personally think we should be giving back more of that surplus. Yeah. So, so whether whether you give it back or not, that's you know something that's completely up to the governing body. Uh, with regard to the way that it's currently uh, on the budget document that we're reviewing tonight, um, the on that first page, on that summary page, if you look at the total assessed value for 2021, you'll see that it's about 100 million, 119 million dollars higher than it was in 2020. So what that does is that shifts the that shifts the, um, the, the, the way that the taxes are applied to the average resident because the average resident's value didn't go up uh, the, the same amount as a, as, a, as a product of a total assessed value, right? The average resident's uh, home went up about $2,000 per, per unit 
and the total assessed value uh, of the entire municipality went up by 100 million. So, so you, you have a shift over to the commercial properties because of that. And, th and that's a direct result of LG. Mm -hmm. what, what is mutually exclusive from that is the surplus. So there's no question that last year we replenished a million dollars plus of surplus as a result of the added assessment uh, in LG. That directly correlates to the excess tax collections that we received and appears on our uh, result of operation sheet in our financial statements. Uh, what, what it does mean is that, that that is available to use as the borough chooses. Uh, it could be used for taxes or it could be kept in the reserve for future years for whatever that may be. In a, a perfect example of what would happen is if we use the entire $1.8 million, we know, we know we don't have another million dollars coming in. So let's say we, and we replenished $800,000. At the end of 2021, our surplus balance will be 800,000. And when we go to start our 2022 budget, our, uh, yeah, 2022 budget, the maximum that we would be able to use is 800, which is a million less than what we're using in the current budget. So if you look at if you look at the 2019 budget compared to the 2020 budget, something almost identical happened. In 2019, we used 1.2 million dollars of surplus. In 2020, we used only 220 thousand dollars of surplus. That was everything that we had available at the time for a number of other reasons. Right. The, the result of that is a 14 percent increase in the levy. Right. So that could potentially repeat itself next year if we utilize the full amount. That is, that's the only warning that I, can, that I can say. Now, it doesn't guarantee that it's gonna happen. There's, you know, if, if in 2022, if that COA number goes down from 1.8 million down to 800,000, then you've recouped your, hunt, your million dollars that way. I, I can't opine on that because I really don't know the status of the litigation or where we're gonna be in 2020, 2021, 2022, et cetera. So we're, if, if, if the governing body's feeling is that in 2022, we're in a position where we're gonna drop a million dollars out of our legal fees in our budget, then I would be more receptive to, um, to utilizing more surplus this year um, but I do want to confirm, you know, re repeat again that this is completely a governing body decision. Okay. Quick, uh, We're not talking about, I'm not talking about using the 1.8 in surplus. I'm talking about the surplus in taxes. That that's that's like, included in the 1.8 million. That right. is and I'm saying to you, I'm saying that the 1.1 of taxes that was collected should go back and that would leave 700,000 in surplus. And well, we have we're, to go seven hundred thousand over on the twenty twenty two budget, over the one point eight that's already in this budget, to create any type of a, a need surplus that, that's incorrect. That you know, if we give it back, we need to recoup it. We don't need to recoup it. We're we're currently utilizing one million one hundred forty six thousand nine fifty out of a total available one million eight hundred and seventy seven thousand. So it's leaving us with a seven hundred and thirty thousand dollar balance. The amount that we're using in the twenty twenty one budget is nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollars more than what we utilized in twenty twenty. So um, I think that we're saying the same thing, but they're not two okay. separate buckets. So you're I saying we're a, using 925,000 in surplus this year? More this, than what we used last year. More using, than what we used last year in the surplus. And a basic, and we're keeping the legal fees at 1.8. So unless the legal fees go down to 900,000, we would have a deficit going forward in 22. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying we will, will have a deficit. I'm saying that with, with surplus specifically, I, I don't see another avenue of replenishing the surplus since that was a one-time million dollar um, windfall, basically. Right. Well, it's not a windfall, it was all just, but there's, there was also 2.1 million in, tax, in legal fees, which again, I, you know, this is supposedly settled. So in that sense, 
I can't imagine ever going back to spending that kind of money um, on that particular line item. Doesn't mean there may not be more litigation in this town because obviously we, we have some things going on. Um, just my opinion is that we should in fact decrease the legal fees line item and we should give back some of the surplus. It shouldn't just be sitting there waiting for to see what happens with the COA line item because that's really what's dictating everything right now. I have a quick uh, question, if I may, uh, for um, William. Did you, uh, the budget for the, you had uh, 1,800,000 for Whitty Field, for Johnson Field? Is that no, correct? I believe, no, I think um, 1.3 was the number. So 1.3 million. So I, that's, you know, uh, Chris, you had mentioned that's uh, $40 for every 100,000. Uh, Dallas, that's 14 times. Is that correct? About $40 per household? For every $100,000 that the budget moves, that's correct. All right, so we got four times uh, 40, that's uh, zero, six, one, four. Five. That's about, about 600, am I correct? $660 per household for all that no, money that, that's not that's not correct it's bonded five percent down bond okay so it's five so it's are you sure it's bonded yes it's bonded yes okay it, so always, then what it's always what is, been the case what is the outlay then william or uh 1.3 million would be sixty five thousand dollars david divide that so by that, two thousand two thousand homes is uh okay. three thirty dollars per home for the field, thirty dollars per. Okay, so yeah. that's the outlay. All right, so I wasn't, uh, I didn't that, see that. That's, the that's this year's outlay. It's bonded, which means it gets paid over the time. It doesn't mean you don't spend the same amount of money. It's just how you pay for it. I mean, I, you know, I look at that one point eight million uh, or one point three million on uh, on a field improvement. It just seems like it's a it's a hefty number um, uh, to uh, you know. It's a, it's a it's a big number that that I think could could be looked at again. Um, we, look, my my view on that, um, Councilman Di Gregorio, is I mean the, the companies and the vendors that do this type of work are um, are, are they're, they're they're only a handful of them, and they they do this kind of work for all boroughs, and we're putting up um, potentially lights that are you know made for for baseball or softball and. Um, we'll quote it out, make sure we get multiple vendors to quote it. And, you know, like any project, you, you don't pick the highest bidder, you don't pick the lowest bidder, you pick something in between. So, um, you know, it's a process, right? We, we're not there yet. We just, we need to just put something in there for the purpose of budgeting. Okay, I, I got it. I just wanted to understand more about the, the financing. It just, you know, the, the one, I thought it was 1.8, but it's 1.3 and it just does seem, uh, you know, now that you've explained it, I understand it more, and thank you very much. Well, um, I, I have one more um, comment, just overall. I want to ask um, uh, our CFO, Chris Pataglia. I know that he, you work for multiple boroughs, um, and I know the uh, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 has been um, passed. Um, giving support to municipalities. How is that going to affect us? I know that some municipalities have a pretty precise number already in terms of federal support. Um, could you speak to that? Uh, sure, I could, I could speak briefly about it um, because I don't have a ton of information. The last correspondence uh, I received was that the Division of Local Government Services will be releasing guidelines on it. So they acknowledged that the act had been passed. They acknowledged that every municipality is uh, anticipating the, the dollars that were promised. Uh, the dollars have been um, allocated. Uh, I believe that um, the auditor had sent an email out that had our dollar amount on it. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but the division ultimately is going to issue uh, a local finance notice indicating how we need to account for it, what we're allowed to spend uh, it on, and, and um, 
and it ultimately just guidelines on the on the entire process. Yeah. Uh, my understanding today is that we will receive 50% of the allocation up front, and then the other 50%, I believe, will come a year later. Uh, and then you have X number of years. The last I heard, it was uh, around five years to um, spend and account for everything, and then there will be an audit on it, and then anything that was uh, was not spent would have to be re uh, refunded back, uh, and and they would have, they'd make sure that all the expenses were uh, appropriate per the guidelines of the division. Uh, so as of right now, most municipalities are looking at um, a reimbursing themselves for expenses associated with COVID over the last year and a half. Um, some municipalities had to, to um, do special emergency authorizations for uh, deficits in tax collections. Uh, you know, some municipalities had uh, parking fees and pools that were never opened, and, and they and they realized major revenue losses as a result of that. Uh, and this would go towards that. Uh, also, our uh, retrofitting buildings, um, putting HVAC systems that have filters in them, uh, you know, putting plexiglass up and re and redoing your your municipal building and and, and making sure that uh, that the social distancing is ha happening uh, as as best possible. So th those are the ideas right now. Um, you know, we until we get the guidelines, I, I don't want to uh, say that we can 100% use it on any one one thing. Um, the only thing that I have heard. Uh, very clearly was that we cannot use it to offset taxes. That is the, the one thing that is um, a definite no. However, the net result of not having to pay out of the borough funds for some of these improvements is, is an, a, a direct uh, benefit to the taxpayer. So uh, it, it will go back to the taxpayer in one form or another, just not in the form of direct tax relief. Okay. So uh, for I appreciate that detail. If um, two things, if you could just give us kind of re real time information as you're getting it um, on on this, so that uh, and and also the, the the second the question that I have is should this in your professional advice should this affect what we're doing right now or should we plan for the budget just as we normally would? Um, you know, I know tax returns have been delayed this year for everyone on an individual level. Is this something that is important enough where we want to push time timetable back a little bit? I, I don't think that it's necessary in our particular situation, just because uh, Englewood Cliffs wasn't impacted um, drastically by COVID-19. Uh, their 2021 budget has a $30,000 um, line item for COVID expenses. So it's not, it's not a big part of our budget. Um, anything that that we get from the uh, from this act uh, would be t most likely going towards future projects um, that relate directly to uh, to COVID-19. So I, I don't think that it's going to have a major impact on our current budget. Uh, it may have an impact on capital projects uh, if we're able to use uh, part of the money to offset some of those, which uh, which would be uh, part of our bond ordinance. And when and if that time comes, we do have the opportunity to either amend an existing bond ordinance or adopt a new one to uh, to accommodate any projects associated with this these, fu these funds. Chris, how much was that uh, that expected? How much uh, COVID money total? I, I don't I don't have the. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I originally it was a lot higher. It was 995. I believe it went down to around six in that vicinity. Six what? 600. 650. I, I'm looking for the updated one. I have the I had the original one, which was 995, but we did get we did get cut lower. So so when is is that coming into the budget this year? It, it would. Uh, but not like like Chris just said, not to offset the budget with a tax increase. The, the accounting side of it would be uh, we would receive it as a grant, and, it, and right. you would see a chapter uh, one fifty nine resolution, which is actually a budget amendment, uh, but it'll have a an equal impact on both the appropriation and the revenue side. So it's a net it's a net zero result to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Chris, typically um, when 
like most most boroughs in Bergen County, I'm sure you know other boroughs. Typically, one, I mean, just so I understand the bu budget process, when are, are they turning in their budget? When do they legally have to turn in their budget? Uh, if you could just give me a little information on that, I'd appreciate it. Sure. The, the legal answer, uh, the statutory answer is February 10th uh, is the introduction date, which corresponds with the statutory due date of the annual financial statement. However, every year for the past, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know the total number of years, but it's been at least the last five. The uh, Division of Local Government Services has issued a local finance notice at the very end of December of the previous year extending those dates. So for 2021, the date extension is March 31st or the council or the regularly scheduled council meeting immediately following that, which would be in our case, our April 12th meeting. Is that the final budget or the introduction of the uh, new budget? That's the introduced budget and the adoption would be April 30th or the regularly scheduled council meeting immediately following that. So that could basically be pushed to May 15th. The final, yes. Correct. The, adop the, the adoption final. of it. So that would be that would be your public hearing. Okay. That's the public hearing. Okay. All right. And what happens at the public hearing? Is there a, a, a presentation or what happens? So pr procedurally, the introduction can, can simply be the governing body um, approving the budget. Then, and, and what they do is they advertise the public hearing. At the public hearing, the uh, governing body is required to open up to the public for any questions, concerns, issues um, with the introduced budget. So that usually buys uh, the, um, the residents somewhere between 10, 20, 30 days, depending on the, the time between meetings to absorb the introduced budget and, and pose questions. If, uh, if everything is, is satisfactory and the governing body uh, closes public hearing and votes to adopt the budget, uh, we send everything down to the division and we, uh, and we have an adopted budget. Uh, from there, you, you, you're a victim of uh, the state adopting their budget and the county approving the tax rate. And, uh, and then the next step would be they would certify our tax rate and we would send out the third and fourth quarter tax bills. Do all boroughs follow this, these dates uh, to the letter or is there some flexibility in that? Or what's, is there any penalty in getting it in late? Those are the statutory requirements. So the, the answer is they're required to follow those dates. Uh, I, there's plenty of scenarios where they don't for various reasons. The division will call and check on status. If you don't, um, the statute does list that the governing body would actually be fined uh, per day for not introducing timely um, because it's ultimately the governing body's responsibility to introduce the budget. And extensions can be applied for or? Uh, we can apply for extensions, yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Okay, is there anyone else with any questions? Uh, Carol's got a hand up. Go ahead, Carol. I'm sorry I didn't see your hand. It's okay. No problem. I just wanted to um, remind Chris. Uh, Chris, I need to tell you that the uh, line number for the legal fees of 590 is pretty tight. Um, I, I don't. I don't know that I even agree with it being lowered to the 590 because right now that's where the numbers for, unless you're not going to be calculating like Jaziniak into that line and you're keeping him in the, uh, in the co-litigation line and then, uh, then I'm okay with it because Mistretta and all of them, you know, I've got them a little bit in both. So I just want clarification on um, on what we should be including. If it's strictly COA litigation and we're not putting Mike Mistretta, Andy Hippolyte, um, you know, we've got labor, Nassau, everything on the Michaels group, which we still don't, that's an open-ended number on, on the Michaels group on Hudson Terrace and what we're doing there, redevelopment study. Uh, tax appeal, you know, labor, engineer, 
appraisals. Um, technically, uh, only Mike Jaziniak, I guess, can go into the color litigation. Um, and we have Mary Beth Lonigan, Leslie London, um, and several other items. So I'm, I'm just saying, you know, we could play shift from the color litigation line to the other line. Um, that's what the council wants, but they, they need to be cognizant of, um, well, of what our outstanding costs are. I think those uh, professionals that you mentioned have always come out of the COA line item. Well, tax appeal has nothing to do with COA line item. So. No, I'm, I'm not talking about tax appeal. I'm talking about Mistrata and London and all of the co people. And now, you know, it's my understanding that a, okay. lot of, a lot of these professionals can come out of the COA fund up to a certain percentage. So maybe we should look at that. I don't know exactly what it uh, is. I've, yeah, I've been advised, I did look at that. I've been advised not to touch anything with the COA fund at this point until she renders her report. So we can't. Okay, well, I would imagine that's happening soon. We've been waiting since November, so, you know. I know, but we, we still don't have a final decision on our whole plan for Judge Farrington, so. I, I, I don't have the answer to that, so. I'm, I'm just saying when looking at the budget, it's something you should look at also, that's it. I, I, I did look, I just told Those you Those are in that line item. Mistretta's in that line item, so is London, so well, is Mistretta, Napoli, so is everybody well, has something to do any, with co any work, any work that has to do with the Michaels group. It's not going in litigation because it's not litigation. That's, it's just engineering and-, and, and I, don't, I don't think it's called litigation. I think it's COA co overhead and expenditures, but um, uh, whatever. You, Ms. Stratton is not a lawyer. He's always come out of that line item. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's always come out of that line item. Well, I, 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 not to correct you, Councilman, but you have been saying COA and litigation with 1.8 million. Because because the co is in there. Just, well, it's, it's in there, but there are a lot of other things in there as well. It's not just litigation. And there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that we talked about, which I'm not going to go into any other. Well, topic. it seems like you know exactly what's in there. So I don't understand why you, I'm being asked to opine. Not if you already that. have a breakdown of what you think you're going to spend. I don't, have a, I don't have a breakdown, and please don't put words in my mouth. Actually, okay, we didn't ask you for anything. I didn't I'm say not, that I'm not at all. No, that's not true, Mr. Wu. I, I, I don't, and I don't opine. I'm not a lawyer. I'm giving you a recommendation of what the NTEs, of what I looked at, at what you spent last year, and I'm trying to be practical in what was spent, and in the last two years, and it was settled. Was spent. It doesn't Again, matter. You're in being litigation. Political. You're, 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 it's a fine line there. I'm not it's a fine line what you're doing. Mayor, mayor, no. mayor. She's talking okay. about. Let's I'm, move on. Let's go move on. She's, she's out of order again. I know. Um, I can't. Nothing not political. Um, she's asking me to opine. I'm not a lawyer. There's no okay. lawyer here. Right. So, so look, uh, uh, the, the budget is nearly. Hold on, guys. Good job. Hold on. I am doing my job, Councilwoman. This is a right, third I'm time both I'm asking. I'm muting both of you because you got to stop. I was actually speaking. All right. It's been a long night. We've gotten pretty far. Debbie's at the point now where she's going to just go after you, uh, not recognizing your role here is not an attorney. You're the administrator. Ms. Mr. Bari, you're the council person. Uh, you should do work in between meetings, not just show up at meetings and, and, and be a wrecking ball. I don't appreciate that. No, you don't do that. So, so That's let's, very unprofessional. Let, let, let's go. Um, I'm going to unmute both of you now. And, and we're going to. OK, let's just end this. Is there anything else to talk about? Budget question and not political agenda. Uh, Can look, we just finish? Is there anything from anyone else? We've heard enough from you now. Yes, I, I have a uh, question. I do. Well, we've also heard from you, David. Yeah. Councilman Wu, go ahead. Yeah, Mayor, I just would like to have some finality to, or at least a very clear plan. Um, our CFO gave us the dates, April 12, uh, to introduce this. So at our April regular meeting. 14th. Um, April 14th, I'm sorry, April 14th. Um, and Councilwoman Sabari, I think you have um, still the most remaining questions left over. 
um, if between now and then we can get those questions addressed. Um, some were directed to the borough administrator, some were, was addressed to me, um, maybe some for the CFO, and let's target to introduce our budget by the uh, regular mayor and council meeting in April would be my recommendation. Council okay. President, Mr. Garbarini needs the numbers by tomorrow. Everyone was on this meeting last, uh, last time. If you don't get him the numbers by tomorrow, he does not think he'll be ready to introduce for April 14th. I leave this in all of your hands. I've gotten you over all the information that's been requested of me. At this point, you, I was hoping that you were all going to come to a consensus of what you felt um, would be uh, a good place to be. I, I believe everything else is, is been spoken about other than the legal line and the oh. deadline to get it to Mr. Garbarini by tomorrow. Lizette, wasn't that what he confirmed to the both of us at the last meeting? He mentioned that in the meeting, yes. Oh, thank you. How many municipalities actually are filing their budgets on this timeline? And isn't it true if the state hasn't finished their budget and the, rate, the county rate is not fixed yet that it's just gonna sit there anyway and it's not gonna be finalized? Mm -hmm. Like how many people, how many municipalities actually get fined? I, I, don't, I don't have data on that. Um, I can only tell you what the requirement is and, and what the guidance was issued. Uh, I, I've never personally seen a municipality fined, I, but again, I don't have, I don't have data on that. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention uh, to Councilman DiGregorio about the process is that uh, we, can, we can make amendments between introduction and adoption. Uh, depending on the size of the amendment, there are there are rules about whether we would need to uh, re-advertise it and hold a another separate public hearing on the um, on the amendment itself. Um, but it is an option. You do have the ability to to make amendments between introduction and adoption. Thank you, Thank Chris. You. Chris, is there? Um, I know you had your hand up. Uh, was there something else that you wanted to say, or was that was, was that what you wanted? Yeah, to say? I, I did. Um, not not I, you. I'm talking to Chris. Oh. Hold on. Uh, no, Mayor, I had my hand up just uh, for exactly what Carol said. I knew that Paul was looking for the budget document uh, relatively so, quickly. So, so I would encourage the council to take the budget as is and, and, and deliver it to Paul tomorrow uh, so he can work on it. We, we stay with our schedule. If things need to be amended later, uh, we, as Chris just said, we can do that uh, with, with some limitations and some requirements. Uh, that, that, that's my advice. Otherwise, it just um, it takes too much. It, it takes too many resources at Barrow Hall to continue doing this. We we can just get it done, which is is in pretty good shape right now. Uh, you know, there's political issues in terms of dollars, which we're not going to solve tonight or tomorrow or a week from now. Um, are you recommending no decrease in surplus, Mario? Are you recommending we stay at the 1.8 in surplus? Uh, I'm, I'm as uh, as presented tonight is where I, I'm fine with um, unless okay. the council wants to do something different you're free to do whatever you want and vote however no, I understand that I'm asking you what you're supporting you're supporting keeping million eight in surplus uh, I am fine as presented Miss McMorrow well I, I don't think it was okay. Chris, was it 1.8 was it is it 1.8 I want to talk about capital for a second why the importance of introducing on the 14th is a separate issue Chris, is it 1.8 in surplus? What is? 1.8 is our current available surplus. We are utilizing 1.1 of that 1.8, which will okay. leave us with $730,000. Okay, and the data that you and I had spoken about, which in looking at, let's take 2020, 2020 out of the picture because that it's not a year that we should use as a, um, a tr true comparison. If you go back in the years, didn't we find that the average usage of, of, of surplus was in the between the the one one and the one two mark of utilizing surpluses whenever the opportunity arose that it could it's been in that ballpark for the last couple of years I thank you so we're just all we're doing is going back to what it was um utilizing it um the only thing i, the only wow. thing I wanted to, to remind all of you i just wanted to remind everyone important uh, also with trying to stick to your date of april 14th any of the new capital uh, project, um, capital ordinance projects, let's say the phones or the 911 or any of that, you can't utilize any of the monies 
to do any of these things, tech, um, technology, um, until the budget is passed. So you're putting, you're putting all of those projects on hold. And we know that there's some critical areas that we're looking at there. Um, I, I encourage everyone, um, and I thank everybody for all their questions, all good questions, but I, I just would like everybody to be cognizant that what is trying to be done here is um, get the, the borough back onto a program of investing back into itself. And it's like a house that every year you're gonna have to put money into and fix and, and make upgrades. And this year, yes, we are doing a lot. We're trying to just get ourselves onto a track that every year um, it won't be as much as maybe this year. So, so I understand that, but I just really want you to understand there were certain areas within the borough that are truly hurting and they need a lot of attention. And that's what we're trying to, to fix. Um, uh, Ms. McMorrow, you mentioned the 911. Can you just give me, a, I mean, I saw the quotes here. Sure. What exactly is entailed? What, what is that exactly? What are they? Uh... Yeah, well, a good question. Uh, first of all, I thought the chief and, and patrolman Heckinger did a great job. I am going to bring them in. Uh, hopefully, uh, if it's not the April 14th meeting. Maybe we might have a, a, a special meeting just on the phones because I think it's, it's a big expenditure. Can't be done until the, the capital, um, until the budget's passed anyway. And um, the chief and the, and the patrolman want, uh, want um, I want to give them the opportunity to explain the differences, what they like, what they don't like. And together we had come up with putting this plan to show big picture. One of the vendors, actually it was Verizon, that had said, put it all on a spreadsheet and um, look at it over a certain time period and then see how they all pan out to each other. So the chief and the patrolman, um, patrolman Heckinger, look forward to coming here and explaining everything, David, um, Councilman, to you. Okay, thank you. You're very well. Okay, um, is there anything that, any, anything else that we need to do? Chris has his hand up. Oh, Chris, go ahead, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, just a quick uh, clarification. Um, with the, with the, cap the capital uh, ordinance, the bond ordinance um, is not gonna be dependent on adopting the budget. So we can introduce the bond ordinance before we adopt the budget if for some reason we did postpone uh, introducing the budget. Uh, procedurally, what we would do is a temporary emergency authorization, which would just appropriate the capital improvement fund that's required. Uh, as long as there's no, um, uh, there's no issue with the amount that we're appropriating for capital improvement fund, uh, that is just a resolution that we can introduce the same day that we introduce a bond ordinance. So we, we wouldn't have to wait for the budget to be introduced to be able to introduce the bond ordinance. Uh, further, which I, I don't think that we mentioned, there will be two bond ordinances uh, this year. Uh, one is going to be the multi-purpose ordinance that had everything uh, that we discussed on it earlier in this meeting. The second is uh, the DOT projects. Those are just going to be listed as a separate ordinance. So I just don't want uh, anybody to be surprised when you see two separate ordinances. The reason why it is a separate ordinance is because there's no down payment requirement for those projects. So what that ordinance is going to do is it's going to appropriate the three DOT grants that we had, and then it's going to um, also appropriate the additional funding on top of those grants for engineering and any section 20 costs that we have. Uh, so you'll see, you know, a roughly $800,000 ordinance. Uh, but we're only going to be authorizing debt on about $193,000 because the rest of it will be funded through the grant. So there will be two ordinances there. Uh, like I said, it's not contingent on introducing the budget, um, but I, and, and I'm not advocating to push it. I, I'm, I'm advocating to, to introduce uh, as soon as we are agreeable, but um, just wanted to make that point. Well, Chris, the budget has to pass, though, if we're going to be doing that emergency appropriation at some point, and they have to be in agreement with, with, with the, those numbers. Um, you know, and uh, also we have the situation with the locker rooms with the police department, and there's a lot of moving parts here. And um, quite frankly, I don't even know how much money that we have uh, left this year 
where we are spending wise um, that we also have to be cognizant of. And perhaps you want to run those numbers for me tomorrow. I think that might be helpful as well. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, which, which numbers are we looking for? Where we are spe spending wise, mm -hmm. uh, you know. In, in, in what, in, in uh, 2021. For every fund, cap are we talking about capital? Are we talking, talking about operating? I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about everything. I'd love to know what the to date legal fees are. Yeah, everything. Just let's get let's find out where we are. I mean, look, I'm a firm believer of getting a budget um, introduced as soon as possible. Every department knows what they're allowed to spend, what they're not allowed to spend, where their limits are. The longer you leave a budget open, people don't have any direction. I, I just that that's my belief. But you know, you guys get to do whatever you want to do. Well, it's based on the prior year until we adopt a budget. Correct. Well, that, that's my whole point, Councilman. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for tomorrow, what do you need to do with Paul? Get him. Um, Chris has all the numbers here. Okay. Is, is that a, uh, is that just a direction from the council, a vote? What, what do we need to do here? Uh, I can jump in. The, the The document that you that you have in front of you with the the, de the summary detail of the budget that's that's all I would be forwarding, voting to Paul. He's going to put together the state document. If uh, we don't we don't need a motion or anything like that, as long as everybody's on board, that you know the, you'll be voting when the introduction uh, ha happens. So as long as you're giving us approval to send it over to Paul to prepare the documents, um, we're okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to instruct them to do that. Councilman Bull, are you okay for our council president to do that? I'm sorry, you're muted. Oh, is that? Yes, I support doing that. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and do that? And then we'll, we'll deal with any um, open issues at the April meeting. Okay. Which, it's a late April meeting because uh, the first is, I believe, a Thursday, right? So, or yeah, tomorrow. So it's 14 days. Second Wednesday is uh, the 14th. All right, so uh, if there's no other business, uh, which we can't have because this is a special meeting, uh, let's, uh, let's adjourn. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Do we have to vote on this or no? No, um, Ramon, we're just going to refer it on tomorrow. So Chris, you'll do that, right? I'm gonna forward him the, the document right now, yes. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Carol, uh, for doing all this. And um, thank you, Councilman Wu. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion. Can I have a second? Uh, can I have a second, please? Yep. Nobody wants to go. <laughs> Everybody wants to say. We need a. <laughs> we need a we need a second, please, to adjourn the meeting. I can't, I can't go to sleep unless someone has a second. <laughs> second. Thank all you. Right. People are muted. So. <laughs> all right, all in favor? All right. All right. Anybody opposed? I hope not. Okay. All right, thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.